the day of this conference. Let me invite the uh, chair of this conference, Professor Tapur Chatterjee from IIT Roper. Over to you, Professor Chatterjee. Uh, thank you very much, Vivlob, uh, and all the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity. Uh, so uh, let, let me also welcome uh, today's speaker, uh, Professor Suma Purpe from Tokyo Institute of Technology, Japan. And uh, she will be speaking on uh, model of uh, local AK algebras. So, yeah, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, Biplob, Rashi, and Jotsuna. I can't see her here, but uh, uh, for inviting me on this wonderful occasion of uh, Professor Ramakrishnan's uh, 60th birthday. So unfortunately, I never had an occasion to interact personally with Professor Ramakrishnan. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, I mean, I've been working on a modular forms of half integral weight, uh, new forms. So I've been able to meet him through his uh, through his papers. So yeah, okay, yeah. So my video was not there, so I've just uh, yeah, okay, good. So I think uh, okay, and yeah. So I would like to yeah uh, congratulate Professor Ramakrishnan. So yeah, very happy birthday and many many happy returns. Okay, so let me let me begin. Uh, so I'm going to speak on uh, local uh, Hecke algebras, uh, particularly with level uh, p squared, p is a prime, GL2 uh, type, GL2 QP, and uh, and uh, we'll see some uh, some uh, consequences. We so describe the Hecke algebra and see some consequences. Okay, so let me define uh, the things we're going to work with. So let G be a locally compact uh, periodic group, uh, S be a compact uh, subgroup, uh, gamma be a character of S, and uh, let's define the Hecke algebra to be consisting of, so G modulo S uh, with this character gamma, consisting of all locally constant compactly supported functions on G, uh, which are bi-invariant uh, uh, like this. So F of K, G, K prime is gamma K, F of G, gamma K prime, uh, for all k and k prime in s and g in g. So this is a this is a yeah this is a well known to be C algebra and complex algebra under the com convolution uh, which is uh, which is given by given by this. So over here we are taking an uh, uh, take yeah so this is a hard measure on g. So so okay so so we want to study uh, g and which with respect to some S and gamma for different uh, different choices of uh, S and gamma and the G. So let me begin with the, what I call integral weight case. Uh, so let's look at G equal to GL to QP. So fixing a prime P. Uh, S is uh, this K naught P to the power N. Um, so matrices of the form A, B, C, D in GL to ZP with C in P to the power N ZP. So that's what corresponds to gamma naught P to the power N. And this character gamma to be just identity character to start with. Uh, so let xg be the characteristic function of uh, the double coset uh, corresponding to g in k naught with respect to here. So k naught p to by n, g k naught p to by n. So then, uh, because uh, the way we have defined our local Hecke algebra, and because we are taking uh, the character, the small gamma to be one, uh, the Hecke algebra is uh, as a vector space, it is spanned by this characteristic function sky g or xg, uh, where g varies over all the double coset representatives. Okay, so let me also introduce some notations which I'm going to use throughout. Uh, so for t in qp star, uh, dt is this uh, diagonal matrix t001, wt is this anti diagonal 0 minus 1, t0, zt are the central uh, elements and um, for S in QP, I have XS denoting this uh, unipotent of a triangle matrix and YS uh, denoting this, uh, this one zero S one. And then let's uh, Z, capital Z be the, the subgroup uh, the center uh, consisting of all the ZTs and N be the, 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 the subgroup consisting of all this XS. Okay, so that's good. And now let me, let me come to sort of a first case. Uh, so we want to look at the case of uh, which is um, in the first case when n equal to one, that's the Iwahori's case, Iwahori Hecke algebra, and that's, uh, and uh, so Iwahori Hecke algebra is known in uh, vast generality when G is uh, 
uh, general uh, reductive algebraic group. Uh, but uh, what we are looking at is only in the case of GL2. Uh, the, the it is uh, Ivahuri Hick algebra is co corresponding to the Borel subgroup, and over here we are looking at the K naught corresponding. So, so using Ivahuri Bruha decomposition, uh, we can get the double coset representative. So this is this is well known. So, so consisting of these uh, elements dp to the power n, zp to the power m, and wp to the power n, zp to the power m. So essentially, this. Uh, uh, diagonal uh, dp to the power n and anti diagonal w3 to the power n, right? And uh, let tn and un be the corresponding characteristic uh, function. Uh, then the Ivahuri Hekal, um, the Ivahuri's theorem says that if I mod out by the center, so, so mod out by the z corresponding to the characteristic function zp, then it's, the presentation is really simple. It's given by these two. Uh, so generators u naught and u one satisfying uh, these uh, these relations, uh, very nice quadratic relations. Okay, and uh, yeah, so I'm noting one more uh, uh, relation which is sort of useful. Uh, uh, that uh, so you have several relations among u naught and u one. So u naught and u i's will generate all the t n's and u n's, uh, and we will see a part of it when we look at general uh, Hecke algebra modulo p square uh, in the last part of the talk. But uh, in the case of uh, so so yeah, I'm not writing all the all the relations, just writing the uh, the presentation. And one of the relations uh, amongst this uh, ti's, ui's, and uh, u1 ti's and ui's is that u naught is t1 u1. So that will that will also come uh, into the picture data. Okay, so that's uh, case n equal to one. Uh, in the case when n is greater than or equal to two. Uh, we didn't look at the full Hecke algebra. So yeah, one can consider the full Hecke algebra of GL2 QP modulo K naught P to the power N. Uh, but we looked at it because it gets complicated as we will see later. Uh, but we looked at what is uh, essentially supported on GL2 ZP. So, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's much simpler. So we, say, so we see that the double coset representatives of GL to ZP modulo K naught P to the power N for any N greater than or equal to two is, uh, is, support, is uh, precisely given by this one W one YP, YP squared YP to power N minus one. So we have, uh, we have this, um, right. we have uh, this uh, N, uh, N, 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 N plus one generators. So, and, um, and uh, then we try to find the relations uh, amongst uh, the characteristic functions coming from this W1, this characteristic function of W1s and oh, this Y P to the power Rs. Uh, so let's denote U naught with the function with the Hecke algebra element corresponding to W1. Let VR be the element corresponding to the element y p to the power r. So that's one. Yeah, that's one zero p to the power r in the in the, the lower uh, uh, lower uh, right hand side uh, one. So yeah, and uh, then um, so that's my u naught and v r. And I also define this y r's, which are nothing but some combinations of v r. And that's just to make the relations simpler. Okay, so we show that the Hecke algebra K modulo K naught P to the power N is a M plus one dimensional commutative, commutative algebra. This time it's a commutative algebra and is uh, generated by uh, this U naught and Y i's, one going to N and having the defining relation given by this uh, essentially the quadratic and the cubic relation. So U naught satisfies a cubic, as you can see, number D over here, and the Y i's are satisfying this quadratic. So have eigenvalues zero and p to the power n minus r, and then u naught and y i is commute. Okay, so then uh, we, yeah, so we, so now we have the op we have uh, Hecke algebra elements. We can uh, translate this Hecke algebra elements to get operators on on the space of uh, cus forms uh, of of level n. So, so we have this uh, well-known isomorphism between the space of automorphic forms of weight 2k level n and the space of cus forms, the classical cus forms of weight 2k level n. So we have an isomorphism between the endomorphism algebras. And it turns out that the Hecke algebra, you can see the Hecke algebra is uh, somehow, so if I take n equal to p to the power nm, we're 
p to the power n strictly divides uh, n, I mean, so m is co prime to p, then this Hecke algebra uh, is a sub algebra of the endomorphism algebra of a to k n. And so the Hecke elements, uh, the Hecke algebra elements that I defined, I can use them to get, uh, get operators uh, on, on s to k n. So I think the, the, this is a, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this is a way it works. So like if you start with T in uh, Hecke algebra and phi in A to K N, then T phi is, uh, is given by uh, this element. Uh, T phi is in A to K N given by this expression over here. So you can, uh, so everything you can, you can compute nicely. Okay, so, so we observe that uh, in this case, um, the T1, so, so yeah, so, if, so I'm taking N equal to P to the power N M. Uh, and T1 uh, goes to, so T1 was corresponding to this uh, DT, right? Uh, uh, D, DP, sorry, P001. So that, uh, that goes to this P to the power one minus K UP. So this U operator, UP operator. So same as a uh, uh, operator TP, but we usually write it as UP because P divides the level. So kind of giving it a new name. So, and we have a UN, which goes to the Atkin linear operator. And uh, so that's T1 and UN. And then we see that the VRs, which are sort of a, sort of new sort of kind of uh, elements uh, which we observe, uh, they go to, they go to, they can be given by uh, this, uh, this uh, sum with the slash operators, yeah? So, yeah. So we know how the AS looks like. And, uh, and as a consequence of three, we have that, um, so if f is in uh, f is of level p to the power r m, where r is uh, less than or equal to n minus one, then uh, if we can show that uh, this s to k gamma not p to the power r m precisely sits inside p to the power n minus r -th eigen space of, of y r. So y r has eigenvalues zero and p to the power n minus r, and the space s to k gamma not p to the power r m uh, sits inside the p to the power, min p to the power n minus r eigen space. Okay, so so yeah, we study this. Uh, we study these operators and their eigenspaces, and uh, that leads us to give this uh, this uh, sort of uh, yeah a criteria a characterization of of a new space. So let me just uh, sort of to yeah state the theorem. I need some operators. So when n equal to one, uh, so in that case we have Eva Huri Hecke algebra. Uh, let Q P be the operator coming from this U naught corresponding to this uh, W W one, and uh, so we have uh, yeah we have that uh, because U naught is T one U one we have this relation Q P equal to U P times W P okay, and Q P prime we take just a conjugate operator of Q P pi W P W P is that can learn. when n is greater than or equal to two. Uh, we look at this Vs, these operators Vs, which is coming from this Yp to the power Rs. And uh, we look at the Vn minus one, the highest one. And uh, we look at Rp to the power n, that's the operator coming from Vn minus one. And that satisfies uh, this, uh, this nice uh, quadratic. And let's Rp to the power n prime be the conjugate of Rp to the power n by W, this Atkin Lena. And then we show that, uh, so start with an F in S to K N, then F is in a new space, if and only if F is in the common uh, minus one eigenspace of Q P and Q P prime for all prime P strictly dividing N, and uh, F is in the common eigenspace of the operators R Q per N and R Q per N prime for all, uh, for all primes Q, which divides N with power at least two. Okay, so and uh, yeah, is it okay? Okay, so then uh, I yeah, then I just write down. So you, let's use these operators u one and u two and just kind of particular place when n equal to four. Note this kind of in decomposition, uh, which comes from these operators u one and u two. So I think you can recall the things coming from the shift operators. These are yeah, so slightly different. The U1s and U2s are not exactly the shift operators. Some U2 is evolution, uh, but uh, yeah, it somehow goes into the same space, at least in this case. So I'm just noting it because we will see a, a sort of analog when we look at the half integral weight scenario. Okay, so, okay. So, so let me just, uh, yeah, move on. 
so yeah so that was uh, so yeah as i said we didn't look at the full uh, full hecke algebra we just looked at the sub algebra and derived that theorem but let's now look at the full hecke algebra but consider consider the case when p is equal to 2 so what i mean that i'm not want to look at the hecke algebra of gl2 q2 modulo k not 4 okay so p equal to 2 2 square and we compute the double coset representatives and the double coset representatives are given by given by this. Uh, so we have d2 to the power n, w2 to the power n. And then we have the combinations of um, this g2 uh, and w along with the y2s. So these are the double coset representatives. OK, and uh, let's uh, define the, uh, again, I'm taking the, the, um, the character to be the trivial character. So I know that uh, the Hecke algebra is supported on all the double coset um, uh, representatives. And uh, so look at TNs and UNs, TNs coming from G2 to the power N, UN coming from W2 to the power N. Again, try to get, uh, get the relations uh, amongst, amongst these TNs and UNs. And we see that the Hecke algebra of G modulo K04, the G is GL to Q2 modulo K04, up to the up to this uh, z, which comes from the set elements z two so powers of them, and um, yeah, and it is it is generated by these three elements u one, u two, v, with these defining relations. So your u one squared is one plus v, u two squared is one, u one commutes with v, and then we have this braid relation u two v u two is equal to v u two v. Okay, so I think here you can see that I said that there are three generators, but I mean, it's essentially two generators because we can get V from the U1. But uh, just because the relations looks nicer in terms of U1, U2, and V, I want to keep the V. Keep the V. Okay, right. So that's, uh, that's the Hecke algebra, Hecke algebra of, uh, of G modulo K04, or PGL2 Q2 modulo K04. Okay, so now I want to look at uh, the, I want to go to the half integral weight setting and instead of GL2, I want to look at uh, this metaplectic group, SL2 tilde. Uh, uh, so, let's, so let's begin. So, so let's take SL2 tilde QP to be, yeah, so it's a, by definition, it's a non-trivial central ex extension of SL2 QP by plus minus one is given by, some two co cycle, Kubota's two co cycle. And uh, just to, to sort of ima Im imagine the things, it's essentially given by this uh, short exact sequence where you have this two co cycle uh, coming into the picture, which is sort of hidden. Okay, so that's my, that's my uh, G tilde. And uh, we have, um, okay, and we, we also denote, so we have K naught P to the power N. So again, uh, down. Looking at K naught P to the power N intersection SL to QP, so the the matrices of determinant one with the C entry in P to the power N uh, P to the power N ZP, uh, and uh, let K naught P to the power N this overline of that this bar be the inverse image of K naught P to the power N. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that would be, that's the the compact subgroup of G tilde that we are going to consider. Okay, so let me now define uh, the, the elements uh, which I'm going to work with. So my WT, so I'm using again the same notation, but uh, it's, it's just a determinant one. So it's kind of just adjusting the, the notation. So for two, T in QP star, W2 is zero T minus T inverse zero. HT is a diagonal element, T is zero, zero T inverse. And uh, I usually denote this G bar. So we have uh, one factor, right? Plus minus one, so G bar would denote the g comma one. Okay, so let me look at the case when p is odd and n is equal to one. So that's, uh, I mean, in the case of the GL2, that should remind us of the eva Horihika algebra. So let's look at what happens over here. So we have k naught p bar, it's a direct, as, as a group, it's a direct product of k naught p uh, with plus minus one. And this is essentially here, so K not B. So, and uh, we have um, we have this, uh, so we want to define a character gamma on K not B bar, which is a genuine character, so that the action of this second component is not just trivial. 
so let's start with a character of K naught P modulo K one P. Uh, that's uh, given is the same as the character of Z mod P Z star, and uh, use that to define this character gamma. Okay, so just take gamma tilde of A uh, times epsilon. Okay, then we see that the double coset representatives of G tilde modulo K naught P one compute that this is precisely, these are the, 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 the representatives, double coset representatives as n varies over integers. Okay, so now in the case of uh, the Hecke algebra of this SL2 tilde QP, you have this character gamma, which is no longer a trivial character. And, and therefore it is, uh, you have to compute uh, the, the support. I mean, because you have this, uh, in the definition of the Hecke algebra, we had this uh, by invariance, right? In terms of the gamma. So some of the some of the elements uh, some of the elements uh, which are supported on some of the double coset uh, represented they might just vanish. So we have to see on which double cosets. Uh, I mean, what are the, the elements which are supported? On, I mean, the, which double cosets we have support. So so when so we see that when gamma is a quadratic character, then uh, we have a full support. Uh, on all the double coset representatives. So it's supported on HP to power n bar and WP to power minus n bar. Okay, so that's, uh, so we are going to assume the gamma quadratic, uh, gamma quadratic character. Okay, and uh, we want to extend gamma so that we can define gamma for this uh, elements HTs and WTs. These are the elements of precisely the, the, the normalizer of uh, T, the torus, uh, the things which consist of uh, H, HTs uh, in the SL2 tilde QP, and uh, we just define it, define it like this. Okay, so, so there is a, yeah, we can, we can define it, something like that, so that it's, it's uh, kind of, it's compatible. And we define, we use this definitions of gamma to define TN and UN, uh, and, to, to, I mean, we define it like this, Tn uh, at Hp to pi n bar is given by this gamma Hp to pi n bar and U n Wp to pi minus n bar is, is precisely the value of gamma at Wp to pi minus n bar, Wp to pi minus n comma one. And we show that uh, the, the Hecke algebra, so we, so we have quadratic characters. So, so we're looking at really characters of Z mod P Z star. So the, the, essentially the quadratic characters which we're going to deal with is one and this chronicle symbol dot by P. And we see that the Hecke algebra of this uh, double cover uh, modulo K naught P bar corresponding to character one, this uh, gamma tilde equal to one, is uh, generated by two elements, uh, given, I mean, uh, and uh, U naught and U one, uh, satisfying these relations. And uh, you, this, uh, this is precisely like the Hiva Hori Hecke algebra. So we get that indeed, the, the Hecke algebra, which we get out of this SL to tilde QP, modulo K naught P bar with one, is, uh, is Iwahori Hecke algebra of PGL to QP. And same thing holds if you will take the character dot, this chronicle symbol dot by P. Uh, in this case, the role of U naught and U1 somehow sort of interchanges, but uh, nevertheless, we have the uh, two generators and uh, we have this defining relations, which looks exactly the same. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the, the uh, that's uh, Hecke algebra when we're looking at K naught P bar. Uh, so in fact, our work, this work was uh, really motivated by uh, the, K, the Loki and Sabin's work. So, so if I just go back over here, no, I think maybe here, yeah, this uh, in the Loki and Sabin itself. So, so what they did was uh, they computed, so they computed the case when P is equal to two. So you have K naught uh, P equal to two and then equal to two. So, so that's a K naught four, uh, the, the, the K naught four bar. Uh, and they computed the local Hecke algebra of G modulo this, uh, this K naught four bar. And then they, they observed that uh, this Hecke algebra is uh, isomorphic to the Iwa Hori Hecke algebra of PGL to Q2. So in some sense, it's the uh, same as like the Shmura corresponding uh, the level, uh, level four going to level two. Uh, sort of thing. So, so, so that's what they did. So, and that was the motivation behind um, starting this uh, this project. So, so G is uh, yeah. So as I said, G is the same as the tilde Q two. Now S instead we look at K naught four bar, uh, and we can yeah. It's K naught four bar turns out to be direct product of K one four and M two, 
uh, where M2 is the center uh, generated by this uh, minus this uh, minus i comma one uh, cyclic group of order four. And so we define uh, the locale sub and they define gamma uh, as in a uh, character taking minus i1 to some fourth root of unity. K14 of course goes to trivial. Uh, and then we can use this uh, to extend uh, gamma to the, the normalizer of, of T uh, and uh, by mapping H2 to the power n bar to one and W1 bar to this element, uh, the eighth root of unity. Okay, and uh, and again, so in this case, in this case, they have to uh, really check. So in this case, uh, it turns out that the double coset representatives, when you're looking at K04 bar, the double coset representatives, there are a lot of double coset representatives, double coset representatives, not just H2 and W2s. In fact, the double coset representatives corresponds to, I mean, they look exactly like this over here. Uh, instead of D, you have H, and uh, and uh, so you have these so many classes of double coset representatives uh, for SL2 tilde Q2 modulo K04 bar as well. Now I'm looking at uh, sort of uh, determinant one elements, so slight adjustment, and uh, and it uh, and they could show that if they take your, their character gamma like this, then it's supported precisely on uh, these two types of elements. So on all other elements, uh, the support there is no no support. So only supported on the representatives of coming from these two kind of elements. So, so uh, yeah. So diagonal and anti-diagonal kind of elements, or the elements of uh, the normalizer. Okay, so so then uh, define T N and U N as before, and we have uh, this uh, Loki and Savin. Uh, they prove that the Hecke algebra uh, is uh, given by uh, up to up to again uh, um, uh, center is is given by this U naught U one and U naught and U naught and U one satisfying these kind of quadratic relations. Okay, and you can see that this is a uh, this is exactly the the Eva, I mean, it's, it's isomorphic to the Eva Hori Hecke algebra P G L two two. So so that's uh, that's what they call local Shimura correspondence. And so when when we have just K naught P, uh, we this is a sort of a local Shimura correspondence because so because I mean when P is prime and P only divides uh, the level only once. Then we know that uh, when we are going from the Shimura, I mean, when we're looking at the Shimura correspondence, it it uh, goes to the same, right? The four uh, m uh, goes to two m, uh, and uh, m is uh, odd and square free. Then four m goes to two m. So 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 the p when p is odd, we expect uh, uh, this isomorphism. Okay, so then we looked at the case n equal to three, just to extend their thing and see what what do we get? Do we get something new? Uh, so so yeah, so it says yeah. So we take s equal to this k naught eight bar now, and we observe that uh, uh, if we yeah if we look at this quotient group s modulo k one h cross m two, then it's generated by h five. I mean you can just yeah. So let's, yeah, it, it, it write it explicitly. And uh, chi one and uh, chi two, let's define chi one and chi two. Now we define two characters uh, on, on, on S. Uh, so, so K18, take it to a trivial. Uh, so on M2, so M2 is generated when minus I1 goes to the fourth root of unity. And then you have an H5 bar. So we take chi one taking H5 bar to one and chi two taking H5 bar to minus one. So we have these two these two characters, chi one and chi two. And then we look at, we try to see where the Hecke algebra is supported. And again, I'm not giving all the double coset representatives, but I'm only giving the support. And we show that the, the, when looking at chi one, the Hecke algebra with character chi one, you know, two eight bar, it is supported precisely on the double coset representatives uh, given by this. So you have H and Ws, uh, you have Y fours, uh, y4 bar, so 1, 4, 0, 1, comma 1. And then you have the, the combination of H and Ys and W and Ys. When we look at the character chi2, uh, then we look at, we see that the support is precisely on the other double coset representatives in some sense. Uh, so you have H and Ws are still there, and then you have um, this Y bar 2 uh, and, and the combinations of H and uh, Y2s. 
Okay. And actually, there are some more uh, double quotient representative which is not there, and on which both of them have no support. Okay, so 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 corresponding to y four. So if you're looking at h g k naught h chi one and chi two, corresponding to y four, we have the element v. We define the element v, and uh, for chi two, corresponding to element y two w two inverse y two. We define the element Z. So we have we have two extra elements V and Z in the Hecke algebra of chi one and chi two. We are just taking those two extra elements apart from uh, the usual U one, U two, U U n s and T n s. Okay, and then we can show. Uh, so we showed that uh, the Hecke algebra of uh, this SL two tilde Q two modulo K naught eight bar corresponding to the character chi one. Is, is given the presentation is this. You just normalize the thing, and that's the presentation we get. And if you see that, you will realize that uh, it's, it's you see u1, u2, u, v, u1 squared is one plus v, u2 squared is one, and then we have this braid relation, and u1 commutes the three. So it's precisely the relation uh, presentation for the Hecke algebra of uh, this PGL2 modulo k naught four, right? So, so we sort of uh, yeah, get it back. So, and same for the chi two. So we see that the, the Hecke algebra of SL2 tilde's uh, modulo K naught eight is isomorphic to Hecke algebra of GL2 Q2 modulo K naught four. So when we're looking, restricting to ourselves with character chi one and chi two. Okay, so now this, uh, we use this um, elements uh, U1, U2, V to actually try to give a new form theory. So, so I think, uh, oh, okay. So, right, so I'm going pretty slow. Uh, so, okay, so let me, yeah, so we have, uh, so yeah, so I think uh, Professor uh, Dipendra Prasad, he, in the first lecture, he introduced this, the Shimura lifts. So we have the Hecke equivariant uh, maps, uh, taking SK plus half 4N to N to K 2N, and uh, yeah, when K is greater than or equal to two, then it's uh, essentially goes, yeah, it goes to S to K. And then we have uh, the theorems of Neva and Ueda, which were the sort of first theorem of Neva was the first step towards uh, giving a new form theory in some sense. So, so they, they got an isomorphism. So in the case of Neva, it defines when M is odd and square free, got an exact, uh, so it used the traces of Hecke operators to prove an isomorphism between the space of SK plus half 4M and S2K2M. And Ueda uh, extended it, uh, and he proved the uh, uh, Hecke isomorphism between SK plus half 8M and S2K4M. Uh, Conan, um, he defined uh, this his plus space, which was, uh, yeah, so Neva actually defined an operator, and this operator was precisely the operator which we looked at uh, coming from the U0. Uh, and uh, Conan defined his plus space as an eigenspace. Uh, minus one eigen, not at minus one, sorry, p eigenspace of, 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 of that operator. So, and it so, somehow turns out that it satisfies this Fourier coefficient condition. Okay, and, and then he defined, so that's, uh, he did it for level four, and then he extended to level four M and he defined a new space, a uh, new space up there. And then Ueda and Yamana, they, they extended the Conan's uh, thing and to the level eight M, uh, defined a Conan plus space at level eight M and, uh, um, show that the new space at level 8 and they defined it in terms of certain operators apart from the plus space condition you have to have some operators to get the new space uh, and 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 show that that is isomorphic test to the two so they really combined a lot of uh, different kind of uh, different kind of operators to get this thing so like a shift operator not exactly shift operator but the combinations of that so yeah so we we try to use the operators that we find earlier to to get a, get a complete new form theory uh, to complete the new form theory for SK plus half eight m, and in fact there is a work of uh, Manikam uh, Meher and Ramakrishnan who gave uh, such a theory, but our methods are are pretty different and uh, also some of the some of the results differ especially in the in the in the Fourier coefficient conditions. So let me just uh, sort of uh, try to get the things. So we again. Um, translate all the elements that we defined in the local Hecke algebra to the operators uh, in the, in, on, on SK plus half uh, 4M in several cases. So M is square free, 
uh, then we're looking at P, where P divides, uh, yeah, P is uh, P divides N only once. And then we have, uh, yeah, we have SK plus half 4M, so, and SK plus half 8M. So we have these operators over here and the involute. And some of the operators are involutions that we got involution like V. So we have this involution V4 tilde and, and W8 tilde. So anyway, we study, so we know the relations they satisfy. We study the eigenspaces. We show that these operators are all self-adjoint and we have this, uh, this theorem. So, so that's, uh, yeah. So we get to that. Um, uh, so it's, uh, it's quite analog to the integral weight uh, setting, which we, we, we proved earlier. Uh, that suppose SK plus half minus 4M is a common minus one eigenspace of the operators QP tilde and QP prime tilde. That's precisely coming from the U naught and U naught tilde. Uh, then we show that uh, the SK plus half minus 4M is isomorphic to S2K nu 2M. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, so that's, so that's not the plus, that's a sort of, we call it minus, so in some sense, a new space corresponding to this uh, 2M. And this space, SK plus half minus 4M, uh, doesn't have any Fourier coefficient condition. Okay, so then we have, uh, SK, then we define, in the case of 8M, we define SK plus half minus 8M to be the common minus one eigenspace uh, space of the operators QP tilde and QP prime tilde coming from the, coming from the U naught over here, right? And, and the operator and the operators V and its, uh, and its conjugate. So V4 and V4 tilde. And we show that uh, the SK plus half, this common eigenspace minus one eigenspace is precisely Hecke isomorphic to the new space of, of level integral weight, new space of level 4M. And we get that, uh, so apparently the SK plus half minus 8M does satisfy the Fourier coefficient condition. And it's precisely the opposite of the colon plus Fourier coefficient condition. So it satisfies the condition like this. So I think that's where it's, uh, our results differ with um, the result of uh, Malika Meher and Ramakrishna. Okay, so I think and uh, this is, I mean, the reasoning is that uh, essentially we use this projection. So Conan defined this projection operator, this P8 uh, is given by this. And uh, so we get that the our operator that we defined earlier, the involution is essentially, essentially P8. And from the expression of this P8, we can see that the plus space is contained inside the plus one eigenspace of V4 tilde prime, because V4 tilde is an involution, self-adjoint involution. So the minus one eigenspace would have the opposite of Fourier coefficient sign. And our new space is contained inside the minus one eigenspace and therefore has the opposite Fourier coefficient condition. Okay, so that's about the, the, yeah, the new form theory. So I think in the remaining, uh, I think, so I, I have at least five more minutes, right? So, okay, so I think- uh, Six minutes. Okay, so I, I might take a couple of more minutes. Uh, yeah, sorry for that. So let me just, uh, I think I'll, I'll skip through this. I, I think I don't want to go through that. So yeah, so I think, yeah. So we're looking at the Hecke algebras and we went to, so we looked at the PGL2, so let's go back to this PGL2Q2 uh, Hecke algebra again and uh, modulo K04. And uh, so we look at the center. So essentially, yeah, it's, it's well known due to Kassel and, um, Bernstein, Zelwinski. It's well known that we have a uh, um, we have bijection between the set of finite dimensional irreducible representation of the Hecke algebra and uh, irreducible admissible representations of the GL2 Q2 with the trivial central character and the, having a K naught four fixed vector. So, so in some sense, we know the Hecke algebra nicely. So we want to sort of try to figure out what are the finite dimensional representations of the Hecke algebra and try to get uh, uh, information on the, whatever we can get from the, on the, on the irreducible admissible representations. Most of those things, some of the things are known and some of the things might be new. So we compute the central, uh, central elements of the Hecke algebra. Looks like C, yeah, these are basically essentially the generators of the center of the Hecke algebra. 
uh, and we use this uh, to obtain uh, the, the, the finite dimensional representation of the Hick algebra. So here C1 uh, satisfies, I mean, C1 satisfies a really nice uh, quadratic again. However, C2 has, uh, is an, uh, it's, it's not finitely generated and C1 and C2 gives the, the full, full center along with one. Uh, and uh, right, so we show that the irreducible finite dimensional representation of this Hicke algebra is of dimension at most three. We have a one parameter family of three dimensional representation and that precisely corresponds to the spherical representation, two two dimensional representation corresponding to Steinberg representation. And then we have two characters corresponding to supercuspidal representations and the other characters correspond to one dimensional representation. So we get to this kind of, uh, yeah. And, uh, oops. sorry. And uh, yeah, so, right. So we compute, so we compute the Whitaker functions. We have precisely uh, exactly two irreducible admissible representations with the level four new vector, both of which are supercuspidal. And we compute the Whitaker function of this uh, supercuspidal representations. So we just use this Hecke algebra method. We don't, uh, yeah, don't realize the supercuspidal representation just through the Whitaker function. Okay, so I think uh, probably, yeah. So I think I'll, I'll skip through. So here I'm just defining the, the Whitaker functions and all the actions and everything. And so, yeah, here's, here's what we get. So, so let W be a Whitaker function uh, corresponding to, uh, Whitaker function in the, in this, uh, which is, uh, this, uh, it's a K not four fixed vector. Uh, then um, suppose it satisfies uh, this condition, u1 w is zero, u2 w is epsilon w. Then up to a normalization, uh, we, can, we can get the Whittaker function completely. I mean, to know the Whittaker function because of this eva Savary decomposition, we have to only know the value at dt, dt w1 and dt yt as t belongs to QP star. And we define it, I mean, we get all, all yeah, so we get the W up to normalization up to some scalar is uniquely uh, uh, determined um, by, by this. So we usually take W D1 equal to one. Okay, so, and then, uh, so, so that was, uh, so, so we looked at, uh, so that's the sort of information we could extract uh, from the Hicke algebra of GL to Q to modulo K naught four. So we wanted to see what happens uh, when we look at the Hicke algebra of GL to Q to modulo K naught P squared, the full Hicke algebra. And we soon realized that things are not very simple. Uh, even when we are looking at just P squared, so we have, we have uh, these kind of uh, double coset representatives. And, the, and then we have, uh, so if you remember in the case of P equal to two, we had this element of the type, this Y, uh, yp, y2, w2 to the power n, y2. In this case, uh, we have not just one, we have actually p minus one elements of the type. Uh, this, we have y alpha p, w p to the power n, y p. So when p is, uh, p is bigger, the things are actually more complicated. p equal to the, the things are nicer in some sense. So anyways, uh, so we, yeah, so we tried, to, yeah, so these are the double coset representatives. Uh, we try to see what are the relations and what can be the generating relations amongst them. And uh, we compute, to, so we are able to, yeah, compute all the relations and also compute the defining relations. So things becomes quite complicated with, uh, so let me, so TN is XDP to the power N, UN is coming from WP to the power N. And then these are this element DN alphas which are corresponding to this Y alpha P, W P to the power N Y P. So D and alphas are like that. That's alpha goes from one to P minus one and N greater than or equal to two. So T and C, U N is kind of element we have dealt with uh, sort of earlier and we get a similar kind of relations from them. But the D and alphas are, uh, it, 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 yeah, it's a bit complicated. And uh, so, yeah, so we could, we could derive uh, uh, the defining relations, working out uh, in general formula for dn alpha, dn beta, saw so that, uh, so if you look at d3 alphas, uh, then uh, d3 alphas essentially, so we have d2s and d3s, right? n greater than or equal to two, and uh, d2s and d3s along with the u1 and u2 gives us all the, all the, all the generators. So in fact, over here, if you see, uh, let me just uh, sort of, uh, 
kind of take a pick here. So if you look at D3, one star, D3 alpha, star D3 alpha, so take alpha to be one. So then you can see that there is a D4 coming into the picture over here, right? D4, D4, four is coming into the picture. And uh, if you take D3, one alpha star D3, one, where alpha is not equal to one, again, you have D4 coming into the picture. So that gives you P minus one, uh, P minus one relations amongst this D4, uh, D4 alpha, uh, D4 alphas, and uh, it turns out that the, the, so we have a uh, p minus one unknowns in p and p minus one uh, relations, and the determinant uh, determinant is non-zero. So it's alpha goes from one to p minus one. Your four alpha also goes from one to p minus one. So determinant is uh, non-zero, and so we get that D4 alphas are uniquely determined by D3 alphas. And then we have these inductive relations amongst the among uh, these DNs and D3s, which uh, gets us all the all the all the DN alphas. So that's uh, that's what we get. So we have P generators, uh, U1 and U2. Uh, U1 U2 gives us uh, all the UNs and TNs. You can see over here. So you can see that U1 and U2, for example, from number five, U1 and U2 gives us T1 and T minus one. And then with the, along with one, I get all the TNs. And then along with three and four, I get all the UNs. Uh, I also get uh, using uh, U2, so V is the same as, uh, V is same as, uh, again, coming from the U1, so number 15 over here. And U2, V, U2 gives me D21, so that's good. So then we have this relation amongst D2 alphas and D2 one minus alphas. So I essentially need the D2 alphas as alpha goes from two to P minus one by two, I think. And, uh, and then we have uh, D, Dn alphas, uh, they are essentially Dn minus alpha up to U2. So, so, so that's uh, along with the, this, uh, this uh, inductive relations uh, gives us uh, shows that the Hick algebra is related by this. So as we, I mean, in the case p equal to three and five, these are optimal uh, generators. But in the case p equal to seven, we see that this is uh, we can actually reduce the number of generators, not optimal. And uh, in the case of uh, p equal to eleven and thirteen, also we saw that uh, yeah, so the number of generators can be reduced. So we don't know exactly what are the optimal number of generators, and it just depends on these kind of uh, solution of this kind of uh, chronic symbols. Uh, but nevertheless, we have, uh, we have the generators. And uh, independently, we could also compute the Whittaker function corresponding to new vector of level p squared. And that also dependent on exactly this uh, uh, u1, u2, and the d2 alphas and t3 alphas. So in some sense, uh, yeah, it shows that we are in the safe. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it matches in some sense. Okay, so yeah, I'm sorry for going over time. Uh, I think I'll stop here. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kulte, for this wonderful talk. So uh, thank you very much. So are there any questions and comments? So this is an open for uh, question and answer session. So uh, are there any, any can I ask please. a question, Tapas? Yes, please, please, go ahead. Uh, yeah, th thank you for your beautiful talk, uh, Soma. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, you did the level gamma naught four and gamma naught eight? Yes. But uh, not beyond that? Yeah, so beyond that is still, yeah, we are computing. So we went back to look at the Hick algebra modulo P squared itself of P odd. Uh, uh -huh. So yeah, so we have, a, we want to do K naught two to the power N for general N. Uh, and we did compute support in some, so there is a partial computation we have done over in that, okay. but uh, yes, but uh, we came back- And what is the because, story for P odd? Yeah, so the story for P odd is, uh, uh, yeah, so we do have an Hecke algebra, but we haven't computed the double, the, the double cover part. We have just the integral rate part. So we have GL2 Q2, uh, sorry, GL2 QP modulo K naught P squared. Mm -hmm. So we don't have SL2 tilde QP modulo that corresponding K naught P squared. And uh, we expect that uh, there should be also, I mean, something over there and uh, because, 
even when we are going get, getting the new form theory for the half integral weight case when we the prime device with i mean the p odd but p device with a higher power then uh, the twisting operators and some other operators comes into the picture as well so the we of Savin and lok uh, they do uh, which case they do the case uh, yeah so they do k not 4 k not 4 exactly yes but not p odd no, they don't do P-odd case. Okay. I mean... Uh, so they don't do the case k not p squared with P-odd, no. No? No. I mean... Uh, you know, Shimura correspondence is uh, between SL2 tilde and PGL2, but also yes. with PD star. And somehow the complete story is not... Uh, to be seen only on PGL2, you have to also take in, in, into account PD star. Did you okay. uh, know about this? Uh, no. You know, uh, what is called the Walsh Fuzzy correspondence? Yes. And, you know, these things have been generalized by VTEC GAN and Savin. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Shimura correspondence gives some kind of a bijection not between uh, SL2 tilde and PGL2, but yeah. between SL2 tilde and the disjoint union of PGL2 and PD star. Okay. So somehow I think the Hecke algebra is not quite, uh, uh, so the Hecke algebra on the metaplectic group is not fully seen by PGL2, but uh, there is some part of it which spills over to PS, uh, PD star. Okay, so you so know quaternion uh, division algebra and what is called the Jackie Langlands or Walsh Fuzzy correspondence. Yes, uh, yeah. So, but uh, but in the case when p equal to two, uh, yeah, this uh, bothers one also for p odd. Ah, okay. So, so but in, uh, p odd also is a problem. I think mm -hmm. the algebras are not quite isomorphic. Because you know, if the Hecke algebras are isomorphic, the groups will have the same representations. Yes. So, but, but that in is the not case the case. When... That is not the case. Okay. The, but in the uh, case they... p equal to, like in the case of eight, we do get uh, isomorphism. So. So I am a bit. You know what can happen is that things which are coming from division algebra, because you are trying to take trivial central character, their conductor may be a little larger. So okay. they may not uh, be seen there, but I have the feeling that it should be seen there also. Okay. So for gamma naught eight, you are getting some uh, isomorphism? Yes, for gamma naught eight, we're getting isomorphism. I'm a bit surprised, but uh, uh, there was this student of uh, Savin by name uh, Arun. No, Arun, uh, just one moment, Arun Ud. Uh, mm -hmm. You know this person? Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Arun Ud. Yes, yes. I, I so know he that. has uh, some papers on uh, uh, MathSciNet. You can uh, yeah, check I think that. I he has one paper papers, in yeah. MathGi Drift, and uh, he does look at the two quail representation and uh, such kind. Yeah, I think I have looked at some of his papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so. Okay, just one last question. How do you think yeah. about Conan plus subspace? Okay, so the Conan plus subspace, uh, right. So it's the way it comes into our picture is uh, this. Uh, so I think maybe I should uh, sort of go to this uh, this one, which I, I didn't quite come over here. So, yeah, so we actually uh, have a, so, so if you look at, uh, we did get this kind of decomposition. So if you look at uh, just the level eight case, then SK plus half gamma naught eight is given by this decomposition. And uh, this is what corresponds with what we look at to S2K4. So if you look at A plus four, that's precisely corresponding to S2K1. And it's a sort of conjugate. Um, okay, so I think, uh, yeah. It's conjugate, uh, which is, uh, which is, uh, what is it called? 
Yeah, so A plus four is corresponding to S two K one, and its conjugate is corresponding to this uh, S plus four, the cone and plus space. So I think uh, just huh? sorry. Yeah, over here. So S two K gamma naught four, we have S two K one and Q U one S two K one. So actually, I should do gamma naught two when I'm looking at the cone and plus thing. Uh, so gamma naught two will be having S two K gamma naught one direct sum Q U one S two K gamma naught one. And when I'm looking at S uh, K plus half gamma naught uh, gamma naught four, then I get this A plus four and S plus four. So in some sense, this A plus four is the space which corresponds to S two K one. And uh, that's conjugate is corresponds to the to the to, to the uh, this uh, Q U one of uh, that conjugate corresponds to the the, the cone plus space. So so cone plus space uh, yeah it's it's an eigen space of one of these operator but it's actually the conjugate of the thing. It's it's not All really right. the exact space. Yeah. Thank you. So I think uh, uh, I will let others uh, talk to you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank, Thank you, Professor you. Prasad, for your nice and uh, interesting questions. So, are there any other questions? Uh, we have very few minutes left. Any other comments? Okay, so if, if not, or, uh, not any other uh, questions or comments, so we can thank the speaker again. So, thank you.